Hello you guys and welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies. My name is Sarah and in today's video I'm going to be talking a little bit about the GRID method. The GRID method is a method for mastery learning and gives your students the flexibility to work more at their own pace. It was something I first learned about in a professional development workshop at the very start of this school year and originally really liked the idea but wasn't sure if I'd actually be able to use it but then later on I realized that it was probably the direction I should go, at least for in my Spanish class. Now, I know this is a predominantly social studies related channel, but I'm gonna be sharing what I have done with the grid method in my Spanish class with hopes that you can see how it works and maybe see if it could work in your classroom, whether it's a small, like mini unit kind of thing, mini grid even, if you will, or something more elaborate like mine. So I'm gonna actually be showing you on the actual grid itself what I put together, how I structured it, and I'll also be talking a little bit about how it's been working and some of the feedback I've received from students as I get ready to build my next grid. All right, guys, let's take a look here at the grid. I did decide to just put it on a Google Doc. For me, it is a little bit simpler. The teacher I'd worked with had a Weebly site, which looked really professional, but again, I just wanted something super simple to put together since it was my first time. This is my very first grid, and I can already tell you there's gonna be quite a few changes happening, and I'll talk through those as I go. This was based upon my own observations as well as feedback from the students. So, to begin, I have a suggested calendar for the grid. The next grid I make is going to be much more detailed and I think I'm going to incorporate some of the stuff down here more into the grid calendar just so people are more clear about, okay, this is what I should be on today. And then it's very easy for the students to tell if they are a little bit behind schedule and need to put some additional time in. I also put some last possible dates for certain assignments. Although there is flexibility built in, just from a grading perspective, you do have to have cutoff points for certain assignments. I originally did not list that in there, but I could immediately tell that students were working at different paces where some students if they didn't have that absolute deadline they might not get these assessments in. So for the grid this is for Spanish so I divided it up into a couple sections. We had two sections of vocab, grammar, the assessment, enrichment, and then I had moved some things around there so there was some other stuff at the end. For how I divided it up basically the goal is to have it be as simple as possible once you have it built that students can access any materials that they need and to try to incorporate a variety of different types of activities and things there especially with Spanish as it is sort of like maybe math in a way that you've got you know a right and a wrong answer on a lot of different situations you can have more of those like automatic grading methods there to, to show them immediate feedback on how they did. For social studies, that element would be a little bit more difficult because unless it's like vocab matching or something like that, maybe you would have a tougher time because it's more so different types of thinking. There's not always one right answer in how we interpret something. I think that makes it a little bit more challenging, but I don't think it's impossible to do a grid for social studies. Anyway, how I set it up, I use a lot of different links on the page to link out to other activities, and I did still mix in a couple paper copies of things. The first part here, if a student was completing this, they'd be in vocab one first. So if they wanted, they could go take a look at this video here. So then this will just go to, um, I have a teaching related channel for the students just based on exact materials that we use um, during class. So this one is a video related to the vocab words. So I just, I use one of these same Screencast-O-Matic recordings where I said the words in Spanish and this was so students would be able to have pronunciation and I just put together a really quick slideshow that talked through the the words here. I also had the illustrated review of the vocab as well. Then there were three practice activities. The first two I made on Google Forms and by doing this on Google Forms it meant that students could complete something and then after they completed it they would get a score and that would help them determine how well they did. There's another form here as well and for these activities I literally just took um, some of the book activities 
or the workbook activities where in the past it might have been a grammar handout for homework and I just digitized that so I can take no credit for this this was all from their textbook I don't really use the textbook much with them actively but really all this stuff that is the format it's this we're required to use this certain textbook um, because it's the same textbook series that the students use at the high school level we have technically they break up Spanish one from the high school level between seventh and eighth grade so that's kind of what we're using I also put together a Quizlet with words that might be helpful for them and vocab words here. So on the Quizlet, what's really nice is there's a lot of different games as well as flashcards. So for the set of terms here, they can do the flashcards. I really recommend the match game as well works great for them. So that's an option. After students have done these practice activities, the homework sheet, the Quizlet, the idea is hopefully they're, they know that material better and they're ready to take the quiz. I put together a vocab quiz for each of the two vocab sections and a grammar quiz for the grammar section. I'm using the platform Socrative. Now to do this for the grid, I did end up spending some money um, to get the pro Socrative membership. You've heard me in past videos talk about how much I love Socrative for a lot of reasons, but doing the pro method is really nice because you can have up to 10 quizzes or tests going at the same time with different logins and it means that it makes it really easy for you all right so I'm on Socrative right now and when you're on Socrative what's really nice is so it's got the spot for you to launch a quiz let's say I wanted to launch a quiz right now first I would choose the quiz so I would click whatever word in chapter six right now and since this is the grammar room I would say let's launch that grammar quiz Then you go to next and open navigation allows the kids to go back and forth between questions they want I do require names and then you can shuffle questions and shuffle answers and show final score now what I love about doing all this and what Socrative can do is that it does make it a lot more difficult for there to be any cheating happening of course I'm not naive I know that things can happen and I do try to be as vigilant as possible to avoid them but the beauty is with questions and answers shuffled someone could be next to someone who's taking the same quiz and they could both be on number four let's say but their number four questions would be completely different and different answer choices so it makes it a lot more difficult for that to be happening and I just have students go to this login screen it's a generic link for each of these quizzes but I ask them which quiz they're ready to take I have the room I have the room name memorized that I plug in for the code and they're able to take it then and then I get all of their results when I go to reports I can click on these results I can view them in chart form here and that makes it a little easier I can also see then how students are doing and it makes it easy for me to tell if there are certain questions that kids are struggling with and then one thing I have noticed with the quizzes and tests are that there are times where a student is trying to start a quiz or test but it's too close to the end of our work time so I do want to get better about kind of allowing what time is acceptable for taking these assessments uh, going forward vocab 2 is basically the same format once again I used activities from their textbook or the workbook as the practice activities here created the Quizlet the video etc for grammar we had two grammar concepts that were part of this section here and I actually had slideshows these were uh, from the teacher who I work with she in general does most of the Spanish stuff and I do most of the socialized materials at least creating them so I can't take any credit for those she created those slideshows but I did do a video version of those either a voiceover like this or um, for the stem changing one it was actually a video I had made last year where I filmed myself teaching it however in the survey results from the students the videos that I put together or that I was in were their least favorite resources so I think I won't be doing as much with those just because again according to that survey data people were not really interested in that information I also found good videos online that were more professional by others so I also included those so they have an option and then one thing I'm going to be changing here I had a practice activity these were from other websites 
So I was using studyspanish.com, which has a lot of great stuff to help students practice. And then I found other online practice activities. I think going forward, I need to have more practice activities with grammar concepts, especially because that's not as straightforward as, you know, this means this. So that's something I want to do better with, as well as maybe I'll incorporate like a paper copy of a worksheet in there too, just because I know some students do still prefer to be doing things more paper, pencil based. So I think I'd have more of that. But then once again, afterwards, there was a grammar quiz for when they were ready. I've gotten through the other three levels. There's a test. This is also on Socrative. And with the test, I do think I'll have a study guide going forward for it because the students do respond to that, especially for students who get really stressed out about their grades and have test anxiety. I think that's definitely something I want to have going forward. And then also for the cultural element, we are supposed to, in our curriculum, talk about one of the Spanish-speaking countries each section. So I kind of created a Google Slideshow travel project that the students can use to that particular place, that particular country. And with the Spanish-speaking country project, by putting together this travel plan, I think it does make things a little bit more exciting for students, hopefully, um, because they're able to kind of plan out a trip that maybe they would be interested in. But it's really great for higher level thinking. Putting a trip together, you've got to analyze a lot of different pieces and have the pieces fit together. So it's a really challenging project for a lot of students, but I think that it has a lot of great potential, as well as in the slides, the students can understand different parts about that particular country. So for example, um, for the first country is Venezuela. So they look at flight information, weather, um, kind of the time frame they'll be there. Think about where they'd like to go in a place and why and, and where they'd stay. Things they can do there. Things you can eat since food is very much related to culture as well as then the uh, parts that they're known for. So this part especially gets into some of the key cultural elements of that particular place. And I did set up the slideshow so it would be assigned to them on classroom uh, that it would be set up for all the countries we'll do that's why there are so many slides here and i do think at some point once i have worked out any necessary issues <laughs> with the project and make sure everything's all good to go i think this will at some point be in our teacher pay teacher store so at some point that will be there just because i know last year i struggled a little bit not sure exactly how to teach these uh the teacher i collaborate with has these worksheets the kids do but when i did that one last year it just felt like the kids were just kind of like racing through to get it done it didn't really seem to add any value it felt busy work like and i really dislike anything feeling like busy work that's not really my thing so Anyway, that's this particular project. Lastly, I put together enrichment activities. Now, once again, we had enrichment activity. Duolingo is an amazing resource for um, kids who are practicing another language, as well as this is a reading exercise from their textbook. That's an enrichment, as well as this is a writing activity, again, put together by the other teacher. And I found some Spanish versions of some English songs. At the bottom, there's an oral presentation. I have the assignment sheet here. I had this part of the grid, but then I realized the oral presentations really need to happen all on the same day because kids are working with groups and it got a little out of hand otherwise. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to this overview of the grid method. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those below. I'll be happy to get back to you about any suggestions I have for your particular situation. As always, if you'd like to check out some of our past videos, you can do so over here. And if you have not already subscribed to the channel, you can do that up there. We can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.